Hello, thank you for joining me to take a closer look at this intriguing and powerful painting by the Norwegian artist Edvard Munch. I'm Marilyn Ivey, Studio and Family Programs Coordinator. Munch created this haunting painting with bold contrasts of color and expressive brushwork. Let's explore how he created this painting. Starting with the background, the simplified shapes of the large looming tree and buildings are static. In contrast, the extreme diagonal of the pier unsettles the composition, curving down from high on the picture plane and zooming right up to the lower edge of the canvas. Various hues of red and green, complementary colors, heighten their dramatic, expressive mood. His unnaturalistic use of pink is shocking, but its repetition around the landscape works to unify the picture. The bright aqua green sky, densely painted with loose, bold brushstrokes, also adds to the fraught, anxious mood. Thick white paint brightens the pier as well as the low wall and hotel's facade. Pinkish white slabs of paint upon bare canvas draw attention to the girl leaning against the railing. One of three girls, she is the only one who turns toward us, her featureless face adding to the mysterious eeriness of the composition. Visit the Kimball's website and zoom in to more closely examine Mook's amazing color and dramatic brushwork. We're here in the studio to get started with a watercolor inspired by Mook's expressive brushwork and bold color contrasts. I'm working from a local scene of the Trinity River off University Drive. It's kind of a dark sunset, and so I'm bumping up the values in the painting and also just creating a different color scheme. I'm working from the girls on the pier with the reds and greens, and actually I've mixed some colors directly um, to that paint, painting's palette. So here we have the materials we'll be using today, the prime watercolors, a mixing tray, a couple of brushes only. The number eight shader is going to be our main brush today. We're using a bit of gouache for that thick white paint like Mook uses and uh, in his oil painting, but this will be a, a different approach, of course. And I've got my large container of water. I've made a simple sketch, just main shapes on my watercolor paper, and I have it propped and taped down to plexiglass, but um, this is a painting where you can work flat. What I'm doing um, today is going to be all dry brush on dry paper, and so all those landscape techniques of wet into wet and graded wash, those kinds of things are not going to apply here. I think the spontaneous approach is going to be a lot of fun for you to learn. So I've mixed up this aqua green for the sky. Remember that watercolors dry lighter than they look when they're wet paint. So I'm just going to activate that again. And I've also put a few drops of water in each of the colors so that those will be activated when I'm ready to use them. I've also put some of the white gouache into the palette. Add a little bit more to that. And that's going to be the impasto or thick white paint I'll be adding to this composition. Okay, so starting with the areas of the sky, I'm going to hold my brush along the handle rather than holding it like a writing utensil. So I'm starting to apply some of this color and you know watercolor has some dry brush effects but I'm really want to, wanting to load the brush just really get paint there on the paper. And 
now I'm going to begin to pick up some of this white gouache. Just make a few kind of random brush strokes a la Munch. And you'll see that where it hits wet paint, it kind of divides out the paint. And I don't know, I really like those effects. Now, because I have my um, paper propped here, I'll have a few runs uh, that, that I'm going to kind of work out as we go along. Um, and so if you work flat, you're not going to deal with that. I've got a paper towel in my other hand. So whenever I need to blot the brush a bit, I can just go back in there and take care of some of that stuff. So I told you we would be using just this number eight brush. So you can see how effective it is for creating all these different passages in the painting. I'm going to be coming in with some sunset colors in just a moment. And so I've left some spaces for those. Be sure to wash out your brush thoroughly in between each of these color changes. So this vivid red is just the praying watercolor straight from the set. So I've got some of that activated that I'm using. And then just like I did with some of the aqua and coming in for this impasto kind of luscious paint, isn't it? All right. So going back into the actual red in the set. And I don't want to go too overboard with that. Just kind of softening that. And then each time following that was some of the white gouache. That word impasto is is used for where you can actually see the um, uh, three-dimensionality of the white paint. And so it's really applied thickly in a few places. Now I'm going to um, get just a few of those streaks and marks from the sunset as I work my way down the horizon. Now I want to really add some rich sunset color here. And I'm going to go in with a really intense yellow straight out of the prang set. And then I'm lightening, rinsing out the brush and lifting off a little bit of that so that we get some gradation right there with that yellow. And then we're going to pick it up again as we move up. Just here and there.
Okay, now we've got shapes of foliage, the trees along the riverbank here and on the opposite side, and these are going to go in quite dark and silhouette-like. So I've got some um, colors mixed up here, and I'm using my color card so that I can really test out the colors before I paint with them. So now I'm using just a kind of agitated brush to go along this horizon. I want to get quite a bit of contrast in there. And just moving the flat brush back and forth, I can get um, a very nice straight line when I choose. And I'm just dabbing in some deeper color to add some emphasis there. Take away some of those little little points the brush has made. Just let that kind of divide up. Now by now I can paint these trees right along that yellow horizon sunset area without those bleeding together. You do have to skip around and make sure areas are dry. Now doing the same kind of painting on this side. And just twist your brush around to get the edges that you like. Moving back and forth for those horizontal lines or straight lines as opposed to all these little, little curvy marks. And notice that we can really layer these colors to get a little bit more intensity and also it breaks up that now we've created a wash kind of area and we want to make it look a little bit more foliage like. And keep that contrast coming with the sky. move that paint around quite a bit and I'm going back to those distant trees beyond the bridge getting a bit more contrast happening with those Do a bit more of that. The paper now is drying on this side and it's going to hold the brush marks more exactly. And this color that I've used here is really just the green and black from my uh, paint set. I'm going to stay with that same dark green and create my um, reflection 
and the water of the river here. And I've got a little bit of a line formed And here I'm painting vertical strokes that are going to suggest the reflection in the water. And I'm going to add some horizontal strokes to that in just a moment. Okay, so here's some of that really nice dark. Okay, now we want the um, reflection um, to pick up the sky, and that's how it's going to read as a river reflection. So I'm painting some of that um, yellow sunset right at the horizon where that would be reflected. And I'm painting carefully to avoid the green in places. I have to go a little bit pinker. And I want to bring in that aqua green of the sky also. Just here and there. I'm rinsing out my brush in between areas so I can Reclaim more of that turquoise color as it um, blends in with, with some of the reflected green. I'm using my paper towel just a little bit to mute that. And then going back to my red pinks with a few more horizontal strokes. Okay, that's pretty fun. All right, now um, I want this to really get dry before I paint that um, little detail of the bridge. So we're just going to let that sit a moment. And so now continuing to use this um, deep green, there's an embankment between the bike trail and the water and then more um, uh, grassy sort of meadow above. And so I'm going to Again, try to avoid the edge of that wet paint because I am painting very quickly here. Just a little bit more of that dark. And I'm going to add just a bit of the gouache in here. So I'll finish that part out. And then using those same colors over here. Still have a little white on my on my brush. I want to go back to So 
just defining a little bit of the edge of the row there. And also just going in with some sort of random strokes with our gouache. Okay, now I'm all set for um, painting the road, which I'm going to use those reds and pinks and really make a dramatic statement with this. So I'm going back in with my deep red. I'm just establishing that and then going in with some of the pinks. Then the white. So now the white is going to pick up the red and carry that along. So it's it's pulling that pure white gouache in that can really make some of these nice effects. And let to see if there are just a few places where I need a bit of that red still. I think I'm ready for my signature. I hope you've enjoyed watching me paint and that it's inspired you to create, create your own monk-ish type painting. 